Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Stylosa and we've got a brand new developer update from Blizzard in the form of this blog post, which is the second of the updates from the current PvP beta. Now this one focuses on support heroes and it focuses on things that have been going on with Mercy and Moira behind the scenes and stuff like that, uh, and also all of the support heroes and how they're currently playing, and gives us a, an insight into Blizzard's current balance philosophy, because we all know we've been into a lot of detail on Blizzard's balance philosophy over the last five years or so, um, but this gives us a more up-to-date sort of view on the way they approach balancing uh, Overwatch 2. So let's get stuck into this. It's a pretty long post. We're going to go through it and break everything down. It's going to be wonderful. All right, then, let's do it. A renewed interest and excitement for the support role, improved queue times, improved survivability for support heroes, behind the scenes testing of Moira and Mercy, and thoughts around historical shield breaker heroes are a top of mind for our, our top of mind. There <laughs> funny, I could read. <laughs> our top of mind for our team as we reflect on the second week of the PvP beta. <laughs> support. We've been closely monitoring the performance of the support role following last week's balance patch that saw improvements for Batiste, adjustments for Anna, and the introduction of a montage-worthy new passive ability for Zenyatta. As is often the case when we increase effective health for a hero, Zenyatta saw all-round improvements in performance over the weekend. Even with a higher pick rate, we saw our resident Omnic Monk's win rate improve by 5%, putting him in a healthy, albeit slightly strong position. Perhaps not as surprising, the additional 25 shield health resulted in a 7% reduction in his death rate, with a halo effect of 10% improvement in kills secured. Anecdotal feedback regarding his new passive, Snap Kick, indicates that the knockback is an effective way to line up kills more consistently. Right then, let's just talk about this, because this... um. This is like we we have the stats, so we've read the stats, and this is what we're balancing off the stats. And it's it's I, I remember a while ago there was a triangle that was always touted with sort of player feedback, the way the game felt, and then stats and working on them all together. What I find interesting about this is it's just straight up these are the stats and this is what we're looking at, and we think this ends too strong now, um, based off what I've just read. And uh yeah. But but, but surely, right? I, I'm no statist stat statistician. <laughs> But surely everybody's playing Zen. I literally have played a ton of Zen because he's been changed and he's got a super kick and you kind of want to play him. So if Zen's in every game, does that increase his win rate? Maybe it's offset by the number of games that he's played. I mean, it must be, right? I don't know. But um, yeah, it's a weird one. Although there's some interesting stuff as we get through this article because they are tracking players' skill levels. So your SR. Um, and they do kind of mention that. Anyway, let's move on. So let's talk about Anna. A decrease in the duration of Anna's biotic grenade netted a slight 2% decrease in her win rate. However, the increased biotic rifle uptime ensured her overall healing output on average remained unchanged. Even with the adjustments, Anna remains a popular pick with her usage rate staying the same. So they're saying that she's still being played the same amount, but she's losing 2% more of her games <laughs> because of the grenade nerf? Can it be completely attributed to that, though? Like, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. To me, this just seems crazy. Like, obviously, they're taking other things into consideration, or you would hope they would. But, like, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know why I find this so funny. But, I, like, I mean, I guess they just sit there and look at the stats. Now, look, we've reduced Anna's grenade by one second. Um, and this has resulted in a 2% decrease in her win rate. Um, yes. Mm. Can it? I don't know whether you can do that. I don't know. This is like mental. Anyway, let's move on. Q times across the board have improved significantly since last week's patch. While correlation might not always equal causation, we're optimistic that support improvements had a lot to do with it. <laughs> no shit. Following Thursday's update, players on average experienced 48% less time spent waiting for a match, gradually leveling off at around a 22% improvement over the weekend, for both damage and support players, beta queue times are now faster than the 6v6 live service without sacrificing match fairness or quality measures. Maybe that's just because people don't want to play live and they're just playing the <laughs> if they've got access to it. I don't know. But maybe it can't be that simple. I don't know. Good Lord. While these are positive indicators from last week's patch uh, are great to see, we still have work to do. 
We compared the death rate for each hero and role to their counterparts in the live game and identified a trend where both support and tank heroes are dying more frequently on average in the beta. Diva and Orisa explain this trend for tanks. Orisa has a completely new kit and playstyle, while Diva finds herself in unfamiliar territory as a solo tank. With players gradually adjusting their approach, we'll continue to monitor and tune individual heroes as needed. And it's just dawned on me. I think I know what this post is. I think this is what this must be. What is this report with all these? I mean, they've probably dumbed down the statistics because, you know, they've probably got more. They send over more detailed stuff to the to the certain, you know, balanced developers and whatnot. I think this is a, a distilled sort of pleb version of what whoever is in like the stats department send forward to the balance department and then they balance adjusting accordingly based off that i bet you that's what this is which which is fine you know i don't mind seeing this but just it's, it's a bit a bit weird isn't it just seeing all the percentages like oh yeah two percent here three percent there i think i'd air more i mean this might be a terrible way to balance a game what do i know but i'd air, i'd air more on the side of just the way it felt i would I'd, that would be my heavy bias in that department anyway um and maybe that's just because I'm an idiot YouTuber, but a lot of the time when you like you, you see something, you can kind of get a feel for it straight away. And that's absolutely amplified when you look at the pro players. Like the pros pick up on stuff really fast. Now I know balancing the game for pros, you know, that's a whole debate in itself. But if something is bad, then you usually get told very fast that that's bad. You know, it's like, well, that's a bit strong. Like I remember Bastion Ironclad. Like how in the hell did that even, the first version of that hit the live servers all the, those years ago? And it did. Not for very long because it was super powerful, but... Yeah, I don't know, weird. But again, it's interesting to sort of get this behind the scenes uh, view into what's going on. While there was little difference at lower ranks, support heroes, this is the bit where we talk about the ranks, by the way. Support heroes starting at high diamond and above saw the highest jump in return versus uh, visits to the new spawn room. At these ranks, the increased pressure of a more skilled tank or damage player on the back line has seemingly become too much for even high SR support players to handle effectively as compared with the live game. The most significant difference was at Grandmaster where the support role saw an increase of 15% in frequency of deaths when compared to live. Good God. So what they're saying here is you think you're good at the game. You're not because you're just getting killed by <laughs> your DPS. No, what this is saying is DPS is very strong. And when players can play DPS properly, they just farm the back line. You know, you, you don't sit there spamming the tank on the front line. You just go and kill the supports. And if you're playing flankers, if you're playing Genji, uh, Tracer or whatever, um, you just go in and just kill. That's basically what you do. So that is very interesting that we're seeing or that they are seeing a um, lower skill players are just seeing no difference. Which I guess, you know what, this is probably, this again is one of those examples, isn't it, of when you look at the content. I mean, I even made a video saying supports a week uh, in Overwatch. Uh, too, and then went into detail on like the, the playstyle change you need, things like you know you need to use the map geometry and stuff like that. Um, obviously, loads of people agree with a lot of the content that's out there, and I've been on the official forums, and you'll see people going, "Oh man, supports are terrible and weak." But what Blizzard are saying here, based off their stats, is actually everyone under Diamond. There's no difference. <laughs> it's like, nah, there's no difference. But the problem is there. That's the bias from the content creators and the more vocal uh, parts of the community. You generally tend to be people more invested in the game. So just by sheer, I guess, correlation to being more invested, you probably are a higher skilled player because you put more effort in to get better at the game, maybe. Or maybe that's not even a fair thing to say. I don't know. Um, or maybe that's just because of content creators generally do tend to be on the higher, like above diamond level. So I don't know. But very interesting stuff nonetheless. But apparently, yeah, supports um, for everyone in the metal ranks is, uh, is no different than it is on live. <laughs> so there you go. You've been told. But it feels different, though. That's the thing, right? So if it feels different, if you feel more vulnerable, that's a perception issue as well. So, yeah. Difficult balance in a game, isn't it? <laughs> we know support players want additional tools and power to be more impactful in Overwatch 2. And the role remains our highest adjustment priority as the beta continues. Philosophically, we are also mindful of the dangers of mobility creep and believe it is imperative that support heroes can survive and be powerful even without mobility tools. Okay. Heroes like Lucio and Moira are demonstrations of the effectiveness of mobility in Overwatch 2. We've seen early indicators of a playstyle shift in the support community to favoring mobility and a strong ability to either disengage completely or face down flankers one-on-one. -on -one. As we make balanced decisions on how or if 
to address this moving forward. We do so with a goal of ensuring that diversity in design and abilities for the support role and that effectiveness isn't determined solely by a hero's mobility potential. Now, that's that's interesting because, that's, you know, it's obvious why Moira is strong and it's obvious why Lucio is strong. They, they don't die and they can sort of deal with flankers and then they can be very aggressive and they've got high mobility, especially Lucio. Uh, Anna obviously can often feel like, oh my God, what am I doing? In fact, I think Batiste is the one at the moment that feels very like, oh God, I'm stuck. Mercy, of course, has got decent mobility as well. Um, yeah, so that's actually, you can read a lot into that, but mm, it's funny, like, you know, I, it, what's funny to me is like Lucio and Moira are demonstrations of effectiveness, of the effectiveness of mobility in Overwatch 2. I mean, you could see that pretty much straight away. <laughs> you know, it was like, Wow, it's more deathmatchy. It's more open on the newer maps. Um, I don't have a tank to protect me. So if I've got speed and I can heal myself or I'm more durable or I can deal with flankers, then surely I'll survive longer. <laughs> I don't know. It's mental. Anyway, let's move on. So this section is about Moira and also about uh, more specific balance considerations. We're planning another balance patch this week that, and will include specific commentary there explaining those changes. But we also wanted to share some broader thoughts about some heroes that have been the subject uh, of recent community discussion. So Moira is the first one. Uh, her versatile kit is translated well in the... Do you see how I dodged her name? <laughs> her vers <laughs> versatile... You know, whatever, I'm just going to try. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Uh, Dr. Odirain's... Odirain. It might be a silent... Oh, I don't know. I am not Irish, although probably slightly ignorant of me not to know how to pronounce Irish names, but whatever. We move on. <laughs> Her versatile kit is translated well in the emerging 5v5 meta. Moira continues to be a flexible pick with a south heel and high mobility uh, proving effective at dealing with more consistent push by flankers. As a result, we haven't observed a meaningful change in win rate between live and beta, meaning that Moira stayed relatively stable in comparison to other support heroes. Conversely, we hear your feedback that Moira's current stability doesn't mean she should remain unexamined. <laughs> As we consider potential changes, we have a goal of providing her with increased utility that feels impactful and increases her potential to be a playmaker, while also tempering the damage and healing of Biotic Orb and Biotic Grasp to bring her more in line with other supports. Okay, so this means we're probably going to get some sort of skill thingy with Moira. Didn't they do this before in, on the um, experimental? They gave her... Oh, couldn't she do something with Fade? Or was... There was something with Fade, oh my god, I'm forgetting. But adding skill elements to Moira, I'll take that. Because Moira is just kind of... I don't want to say she's brain dead, but you're you, you sort of on autopilot, aren't you, when you're playing Moira? Like you, you just need to make sure you use Fade at the right time and throw heal orbs out when you need to. Apart from that, you're just kind of like on autopilot with Moira. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, it's good to see some stuff is coming to Moira. Mercy. As any veteran Mercy player will tell you, the full potential of Mercy is not unlocked until you've learned the techniques that accompany her kit, particularly the super jump. While there are many guides and videos for those wanting to learn the method, it ultimately requires a complicated sequence of keystrokes and conditions that are not accessible or apparent to the average player. Internally, we have started testing improvements to Mercy's verticality, leaning into the unintended consequences of player discovery. We want to take it a step further by making the ability to super jump more consistent for everyone, not just the players who know the not-so-secret technique. Mercy's mobility has always been a core part of her kit, and we will continue to look for ways to accentuate it and make it more accessible for everyone else, okay? I, uh, I don't know, like, that's kind of, like, you could tell you had a good Mercy when the Mercy knew how to super jump. I remember overanalyzed, and whenever it was a Mercy one, and I think I can remember doing low-ranked mercies, and some of them knew how to do super jumps. And it's like, why are they in this rank? You know, they've clearly spent this time to to learn this this, this awesome ability because it is really powerful. Um, I mean, I'm terrible. I can barely do it. I, I don't really play that much mercy, but I, I'm trash. So I'm like, great, I'll take this. But I think this is, I don't know, this is going to make, if you're a mercy main and you know how to do this and you do it regular, you're kind of going to feel a bit shitty, the fact that they're just going to make this easier. It, I prefer it if they looked at other ways. Mercy... Mercy needs some sort of like burst heal. I've said this before and I'm just going to keep saying it until the cows come home. But she needs some way of... Because you can... Like she's the most reliable healer. But you can just feel at times like you're there pumping healing into someone. And like they're dying. You can see they're dying. You don't have any way to stop this apart from... Okay, res. But that's probably suicidal in a lot of cases. Whereas, you know, the other supports have got some sort of thing they can do to like amp up the healing, burst the healing. Um, or like prevent death, you know. Whereas... Mercy doesn't have that. 
Um, so I don't know. But um, yeah, Mercy Super Jump is now going to be easier to do. And finally, we finish with uh, Junkrat and Symmetra. So alongside Moira and Mercy, we also want to acknowledge the growing conversation around Junkrat and Symmetra. Both heroes excelled as shield breakers, and the shift to a single tank composition has made both heroes feel slightly out of place in the emerging meta. Junkrat continues to present interesting design questions. We've considered increasing frag launches projectile speed. However, we found that by doing so, we risked making his signature weapon feel like more of a rocket launcher. Instead, we're exploring ways to better reward uh, direct hits as a form of skill expression. Okay, cool. Didn't we have that before? Am I off my... No, I don't think we did have that before. Maybe we did, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, directs are probably just going to cause more damage. Um, we agree with community feedback that the reduction of shields being thrown about the battlefield makes Symmetra's photon projector harder to get value from. At the same time, Symmetra is suffering from increased overlap with heroes like Mei, who possess better tools for close, close quarters survivability. While these heroes aren't our current focus, they're on our radar for future adjustments and continued monitoring. Okay, so <laughs> they're just saying play Mei there. If you're, if you're a Sim main, just play Mei, you're just better. <laughs> Because you can ice block if you're about to die, which obviously is quite strong. And May actually does a lot. I think, doesn't May do like 100 DPS with a, a, a right click or alternate fire now? I think she does. But whatever. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. It's nice to get behind the scenes stuff on balance and, and what they're doing with the game. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comments below, guys. And uh, I think I will catch you lovely lot on the next video. Remember, you can follow me on everything, which is at Stylosa. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Doodaloo.